So I wanted to do this video of how you can make a rock wall look beautiful. I have a rock retaining wall in my backyard and for many years I just left it as is with, with weeds that would grow up in between. We'd just go out and pull the weeds between the rocks periodically. We'd get um, morning glory and grass and other weeds growing in between the rocks, kind of like grass like this from the from the lawn would get down in between the rock wall and that just wouldn't look as nice. But now we have some nice flowering succulents. The sun is just coming up right now and so these succulent flowers open up with the sun and they close at night when the sun goes down. They're kind of amazing beautiful plants. So when the, when the sun comes out it's about noon right now so the full sun is out and these flowers really open up when the sun comes out. And It's interesting to watch and then when it gets really cloudy or when the sun goes down, they kind of close up. And so I wanted to show you how I was able to plant succulents uh, between the rocks in my rock wall. It's kind of a tricky process. Um, so you want to, the first thing you want to do is pull any weeds from between the rocks. And sometimes if you can't get the roots out, maybe even spray with some Roundup or some way to, some kind of herbicide to kill the weeds that are between the rock wall. Um, and then wait a week or two, and if you see weeds come up again, you can either spray again with Roundup or pull the pull the weeds out again. So what you want to do is pull the weeds out as best as you can, because one thing I noticed is we planted some succulents right here, and you can see there's a little bit of crab grass growing out from between the succulents and also this leaf of this dandelion leaf right here. So I got some, some weeds that I didn't completely 100% remove, and so if you don't get all the roots out, and some of these weeds will grow back in between the, in between the succulents and later after the succulents are growing and established it's very difficult to pull out these grasses without also damaging the, the succulents that you have in place so the first step would be as I mentioned is to eliminate any weeds from the area where you're going to be planting the succulents and like I said you can use a chemical like Roundup which you know there's controversy about Roundup and how good it is for you. Of course, you don't want to ingest any of the Roundup or breathe in any of the Roundup, but uh, Roundup can be used to kill some plants or other herbicides so that when you plant the succulents later, you won't be getting <clears throat> these these weeds come up uh, in between the, the succulents that you plant. Uh, or just pull them and wait a week or two and then pull them again and thoroughly eliminate any weeds in the roots. So that's the first step. The next step is you're going to want to find a place where you can create like a little pot between the... Uh, you want to find a place where you can create a little pot between the rocks. So here's one example. You see like I, I put a little rock right here and there's a little soil with a little pot right there where they can hold dirt and water. Uh, so maybe another rock here would be better. Anyway, this one didn't work for some reason because it didn't get enough water or sunlight. So here's a kind of a, a little bit of a dead succulent, but I'll go ahead and try a plant here again. But this is kind of the idea of what you want to do is you want to create a spot where there's a, a gap in the rocks. You want to use something to prevent the dirt from escaping, create like a little mini pot of soil. And you can use a nice high quality potting soil. Um, I like to use a mixture of perlite mixed with soil pep. Uh, soil pep is kind of um, finely ground uh, mulch or finely ground wood chips basically and if you use that it's going to be well draining and also the the wood chip or the the finely ground bark nature of soil pep is that it's not going to wash away as easily if you have some some kind of finely ground bark organic material like that it's not going to wash away between the cracks and the rocks as easily as left a fine sand for example if you have a soil that's made up of a lot of sand it's going to wash away a little bit easier so you want something with some fairly good organic material the organic material is going to feed the succulent plants and also the organic material is going to help hold the the soil in place between the cracks of the rocks so it doesn't erode away too quickly um, but you also want something that can be drain well draining like have a little bit of soil pep um, a little bit of this bark mixed with perlite uh, as a soil to go between the rocks the soil in my area where I live in Utah is a lot of clay soil uh, so I also made little pots out of clay you can kind of see right here I made a little pot out of just some clay I took some clay soil that we have when it's wet you can kind of form the clay soil like clay basically and 
create a hard pot that hardens when it dries and then that will hold the soil in. And then underneath that, I have a little bit of that better organic type of soil with soil pep and perlite. Here's another example of a spot where there's kind of a natural pot being formed by this big rock here. There's a big rock here that forms like a little pot that the, the plant can sit in and then you just kind of dig, I dig down, dig some of the clay out, plant the new plant in and then cover it with some of the good high quality soil pep and uh, potting soil that I made. So again, it's just about finding gaps in the rocks where you can find a little gap in the rock where you can dig some of the clay out or whatever soil is there, plant the plant in, then put some high quality soil around it to cover the roots. And then just like any plant, when you plant them at first, you want to water them really thoroughly at first. You make sure you water them every day, at least a couple times a day when you first plant them. Because the tricky thing that, that on a rock wall is it's vertical, and so the water doesn't stay there very well. So you have to f do a fine spray or a fine mist um, so the water doesn't... When you're watering, you have to be very careful that the water does not erode the dirt out from around the plant so you don't end up with roots that are just hanging in the air. And I live in a very dry, hot desert climate. Um, in the summertime, it's dry and hot. Um, but in the wintertime, it's cold and, and sometimes snowy. So luckily, these plants have done fine in the cold weather. But uh, you, you also need to make sure that when you water, that you don't spray these too harshly because you don't want to erode away the soil when you're watering them. But you also do have to water them very frequently when they're first getting established uh, for the first several months. If you if you plant them in the summertime or in the dry part of the year, they need to be watered very frequently because they're they're just hanging in a in a rock wall and the water can wash away fast because it's a steep slope. So they're kind of tricky to get established just because of the nature of the cracks in the rock. Sometimes I had one of my plants die. I'll show you that one in a second here. But uh, you, you just want to find gaps where you can dig a little bit in, plant the plant, cover it with soil, and then water it, and water it enough to get established. And I'm still kind of working on this area. There's some gaps still where I would like more plants to come. Uh, and over here I don't have, I put some of the more ugly plants right here because uh, you can't see this side of my rock wall from my, from my back deck or my back porch as easily. So I, I had some of the excess, less attractive plants that I put over here. However, I, like, I would like to fill in with a few of these other gaps, like right there and right there. I'll probably fill in here this summer with some nicer flowering um, succulent plants. And these ones right now, like I said, the flowers aren't even really out yet. It's going to look much better once the sun comes out. These, these flowers really open up in the sunshine and they look amazing. So let me come over here and show you. Right here I planted a creeping, a creeping thyme plant and half of it just died on me because I think I think the soil like the soil stayed there. I made a little pot with I had like a little rock a little rock was sitting right there that fell out and then there was some clay that I made a little pot out of. And luckily the thyme plant survived but just barely it almost died on me. There's a lot of under, under this bark there's a lot of dead branches. Now just because it, it's challenging to get the plants to get enough water and have them soak up the water before the water runs off the rock wall. So that's the challenge is you want to water them very frequently when they're first getting established. You need to water them a lot and make sure the water uh, doesn't erode away the soil while you're watering it. Here's a creeping thyme that did really well. A little creeping thyme. I like the creeping thyme just for variety's sake. It looks kind of nice there. It's got very tiny leaves. And it's also edible as an herb. I really like to cook with, with thyme. I have other thyme plants that I cook with. I don't really use this one for cooking as much, but I could if I needed to, if I ran out. So I really liked, I really like the taste of thyme in, in dishes that I cook, but it also looks nice as a variety um, in the rock wall. But I, I really, my favorite are the, are the flowering plants. And I'll come back out here when the sun's out more and show you what it looks like in the full sunlight. So. I think, yeah, the succulents like this are a great way. I just went to my local nursery, Cook's Nursery here in Linden, picked up some variety of different flowering and non-flowering succulent plants and planted them between the rock wall, and it looks so much better than it used to be, and it's less maintenance too because I don't have to come out here and weed and pull weeds out of the rock wall every time, um, which I'd have to do on a, you know several times every year. I'd have to come out here and pull weeds out from the rock wall, and it just would look ugly the rest of the year, and then... I'd have to worry about erosion, and so the benefits of succulents in the rock wall is they look beautiful with the flowers, 
uh, you don't have to come out and weed it as much. It, it holds the soil back and it prevents erosion and just a great way to go. So if you're thinking, if you have a rock retaining wall with gaps like this, and you have problems with weeds and it looking ugly, then spend some time and effort and money to plant some succulents here. And these do get watered by my sprinkler system. So now that now that the plants are established, um, I don't have to come out here and water them ever. They just get watered by my sprinkler system. I don't have to worry about them. They're they're taken care of now that they're established. I don't really have to water them at all. Um, except for if there's a spot that gets dry, or if I plant a new one, then I'll have to water it. But now that they're established, they're doing really well. And these have only been here for maybe a, one year. That I planted them last, I think it was last summer that I planted these. So these haven't been there that long, maybe a year and a half. I can't remember. It's <laughs> been a busy, busy year and a half. So anyway, they, uh, I definitely recommend putting succulents between your rock wall. Another thing you could plant between your rock wall that I did is I had some extra strawberry plants that I had to remove from one area of my yard and I decided to try experimenting by putting strawberry plants in the rock wall as well. And the strawberry plants, um, they don't look nearly as attractive as the succulents do, but they do help hold the soil back and I kind of did the same strategy where I created a little pot, uh, pull that little weed out, but um, I created a little pot with like sticks and little rocks and then some dirt soil and I planted some strawberry plants and then I watered them frequently just like you would with anything that you have to plant in the rock wall but again I don't like the way the strawberry plants look as much but it's nice to get some strawberries you know we're getting a few a few little berries you know growing in the rock wall and then as these send out little shoots you know the strawberries will send out uh, little leaders you can kind of train them to grow and to, and to fill in other spots where you need uh, more plants to grow so I'll kind of train these strawberries to fill in the spots. Um, the downside though of these strawberry plants is they're not going to block the weeds as well. Um, I still get morning glory growing in here. Um, still get some weeds down here growing. But there's another strawberry plant. Here's another example of some weeds that are growing in front of my strawberry plant. I'm going to get that one out. But anyway. I like the strawberry plants in the rock wall for the berries, and it's just kind of a nice variety. But for the very best looking thing, I would do the, the succulents, or the creeping thyme looks pretty good too. And the succulents and creeping thyme will really fill in those gaps better than a strawberry plant will, and really prevent the weeds even more than a, than a strawberry plant would. So up here where the strawberries are, it's still a little bit more maintenance. I just barely planted these strawberries in the rock wall this spring. Some of them I planted last over a year ago and they survived but other ones I had to plant this spring in the rock wall so I definitely recommend the succulents is the best solution for making a rock wall look beautiful another example of a little gap between the rocks I put a little tiny pebble there and some dirt to kind of create a little mini pot where the soil sits so the soil doesn't rush out the water doesn't run away, run off so again here's another example a little rock with some dirt behind it and you can plant a plant in the hole there. So I kind of did the same thing with the succulents. You know, you can find spots where you can plant a plant. Um, again, there's another example of a pot that I made, you know, in the, in, in the crack. So it will hold the soil back and then the succulent will cover that little pot that you made and it will look beautiful. Here's another example of a spot that's kind of a natural little pot formation. Uh, I need to plant something there. Some of the gaps in the rocks just are natural good pots anyway and you just have to dig down dig, dig the dirt out from between the crack and plant the plant then fill it in other spots i had to kind of engineer a pot to fit and so planting these plants in the rock wall is actually quite challenging it's kind of tricky you have to buy different size plants for different size holes in the rocks and then create a little area where you can fit a plant and plant it and then water it frequently so not easy to get plants to grow in the rock wall. It takes some time when you're, especially when you're planting the plants to begin with, it takes some time. You have to pull the weeds and make sure that it's weed free. Then you have to carefully fit a plant in the cracks and the, in the gaps in the rock wall and carefully bury it and carefully water it. And so it takes some effort getting them established. But once they're established, they're pretty low maintenance and they are well worth the effort because they look amazing. So here's one example of a pot that doesn't have a plant in it, but that's kind of what you do. You can use a little, little flat rock like this, or just some clay soil and pack it in and create like a little pot made out of clay soil or a rock. 
and then you plant the plant there and so you just want all your your goal is to try to prevent the soil from eroding away when you water it because what's going to happen is when you water these plants if it's just loose sandy soil it's going to it's going to wash out every time you water it so you want to do something to prevent that from happening create a little dam or a little pot you can use sticks like little pieces of wood scrap uh, pieces of wood or sticks as a pot you can use a rock you can use concrete now you can use clay if you have clay soil that the clay once it hardens can form kind of a a clay pot um, and then fill it in behind that clay pot or that rock pot with good quality compost soil with perlite or some sandy mix that can be a healthy soil to keep the plant alive and keep the plant growing well and then recently i just added a little bit of uh, compost type soil just to cover it and add to because once in a you know you're going to want to add a little bit of soil once in a while because as you water the soil is going to erode and you want to do something to help keep the soil in place so that's one example of a pot uh, here's another one where you can see there's like a flat rock like a table basically there's a table and I built a little a little uh, pot out of clay and then put some higher quality soil underneath that to bury the plant in place and it took and grew. Sometimes the plant won't work uh, if there's not enough water or sunlight that it's getting, um, but it's, that's how you got to do it and create little pots that fit in the rock wall and the gaps in the rock wall. And Sometimes there's perfect natural little gaps that form a perfect little pot. You just want to make sure it's not a bottomless pit because sometimes these rock walls have huge holes underneath and behind the rocks that you got to fill in with something. So you got to fill in those gaps with, again, you can fill in those deep, deep holes with sticks or with soil or dirt if you have like enough extra dirt to fit in those holes you just need to fit, fill in those there's sometimes little bottomless bottomless little pits that are behind the rock wall if it's an old rock wall that's been there for many years as the water seeps through and around it sometimes there's big holes behind the rock so you got to fill in those big holes so that when you plant the succulents you don't want them just to be hanging with the roots hanging in the air because the roots need to be in contact with soil so they don't dry out Here's another plant that I planted in the rock wall several year, many years ago actually. It's been here for, for longer than my succulents have been. These are not succulents, but they're, they're flowering plants. I can't remember what variety they are, but they're flowering plants designed to go in a rock wall and they kind of hang down. And in this case, I created a large pot using concrete. You can see I poured a little bit of concrete between the rocks to kind of hold them in place because I was worried about erosion. And I created a little pot using concrete in this case and then filled it in with high quality soil. It's kind of hard to see here. I might need to get gloves if these are too spiky, but it's kind of hard. This plant is really kind of overgrown now. But in this case, I can't really even see it, but there's maybe if I do it this way, you can see it. No, not really. Anyway, in this case, I created like a little pot out of concrete. I There was a natural hole there and then I just created a little, a little wall of concrete and then filled it in with soil so there's a and then it was a large deep hole back there that I filled in with a lot of soil and then watered it thoroughly until the plant became established and it also gets watered by my sprinkling system and so this flower only blooms in the spring and then the flowers die and the plant doesn't look as nice throughout the rest of the year but I kept it there because I like the plant it looks good and it's better than you know the plain looking rock wall so I think a rock wall with flowers in it is a much more attractive um, way to go than just letting the weeds go in your in the rock wall that's another example of a large flowering plant that's been there for probably five years in this part of the rock wall here. Here's another spot in the rock wall where I would like to plant more succulents. We've got some flowers that have grown between the, the cracks in the rock. Here's an example of a plant that just kind of planted itself. We've had some of these same uh, purple flowers that are up here on the, on the hill that have kind of seeded themselves down on, in the middle of the rock wall and we've left it there because it would be better than weeds. So. We've allowed some of these flowers that come off the hill naturally to stay in the rock wall and grow. Again, I like the look of the succulents better than these kind of flowers that are in the wall, but again, we've left them. Um, but I would eventually like to get more succulents that plant in here and look nicer and stay nicer looking year round. Got another flowering plant, kind of like the one that was on my side yard that's right here in this natural, natural pot-like thing that's right here. So, uh, Oh, that it's right here there's kind of a natural pot where we could plant something and I might actually fill this in with a succulent instead of this plant that's here now so you just want to look for areas like this where there's dirt between the rock you can dig down and plant the succulent in place and then it, where it's not gonna where the, the soil is not gonna erode away completely 
Uh, again, it's tricky to do, but you can find areas where it's going to have an, a good natural area to, to fill in. If you have an area in the rocks that's kind of like I said, like a bottomless pit, you can fill it in with some of this organic material. This is kind of soil pep type uh, compost mulch, uh, wood chip type material that's just finely ground. And you can use this to fill in because these, this thick organic material isn't going to wash away as quickly as just sand would. So something like this has a lot of organic material too. It's going to help um, fill in those cracks in the rocks and not wash away immediately when you water because it will kind of get stuck in the crevices and cracks between the rocks. So get something like this and maybe mix it with some soil pep so it will drain uh, well. Because if you just use only organic material, it's not going to drain well enough. Um, and also sometimes this organic material is as it's breaking down and composting can create a lot of heat and so you want to be careful you don't cook your plants but uh, this material can be useful for filling in cracks and holes in the rock wall. So you also want to be strategic about where you put the flowers or where you put the succulents. As you notice I have a big rock wall here that I don't have a lot of plants on yet. I would like to have some there but we just haven't gotten around to it yet and so in the places where we notice the flowers or see them the most is where we planted them to begin with. Um, but I would eventually like to fill in a lot of these gaps with, you know, some nice looking succulents. I just don't know if they'll get enough water or sunlight in this particular location. It's underneath a large pine tree here. So I haven't planted succulents in this spot yet. So be strategic about where you plant them. I think they do like full sun if possible. So plant them where they're the most noticeable. I this this particular spot needed a little accent, so that's where I first put flowers on this particular part of the rock wall. Um, but you do want to spend your money strategically about where you're going to place the plants, put them where there's going to be enough sunlight and water, and also where you're going to see them the most, where they look the most beautiful, where you're going to be able to appreciate them, and where your neighbors will see them too. So here's the flowers in the full sun. Once the full sun comes out, they, they really open up some amazing colors in them. It's beautiful red, these yellow ice plants. They like these multicolored pink and orange ones. They're really cool looking. These old pink ones. And yellow. I don't even know what the names of these are, but they just had them at our local nursery. So there's an up close picture of some of the foliage. That's the ice plant with the green and that. Looking good. Bees enjoying it. And then there's these amazing purple ones. So when the, when the sun comes out, it's about noon right now, so the full sun is out and these flowers really open up when the sun comes out. And it's interesting to watch. And then when it gets really cloudy or when the sun goes down, they kind of close up. So thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If it was helpful, I could use some support for my YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. Try out some succulent... Uh, plants in your rock wall it makes it look beautiful, prevents erosion, and prevents weeds. And it looks really nice. Thanks for watching.